if you quit making Marvel movies, mm -hmm. I think over time, then the importance of the streaming product degrades. Yeah. One reason yeah, yeah, yeah. we are so invested in the streaming product is because they occasionally put out billion or $2 billion movies mm -hmm. that take over the world yeah. mm -hmm. for a period of time, right? Welcome back to The Break Room. Is the future of Marvel in TV? And if so, animated or live action series? It's the Monday headlines show of The Break Room. Hit that graphic. Wow, nice. Nailed it, nailed it. I'm Zach Huddleston, thrilled to be joined on the panel today uh, by good friends, Maud Garrett. What's up? Maud. And sometimes on-screen producer, today on-screen producer, Woo! Evan Yee is here. Say it ain't so. That's a reference That's to the Twitch great. section. That's right. That's Took great. me five minutes too late. Wow. <laughs> well, right. you know, you, you, really, you're still in that era, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, that the general era. Sure. You arrived uh, exactly when you were supposed to. You know, to. Mod's jacket's reversible. It goes from Blue Album to Pinkerton. Okay. Uh, we're also talking um, Jack Quaid out there talking about the boys and some acolyte news. Uh, and real quick. Did you get your Deadpool and Wolverine tickets? They just dropped the, they're on sale today. Um, new rock star Jessica Clemens was uh, giving us real-time reports on some screenings oh, yeah. filling up. The Thursday night screenings are already filling up in our area. I don't know about your area, but if you have a specific time you like to watch new Marvel <laughs> movies, I would get your tickets ASAP. Yeah, yeah there, uh, I was looking uh, at a few different theaters, a few different spots, and I was like, oh, it's all full. Really? Wow. Which is great. Yeah, great. You love to see it, you know, in for any movie, but yeah. yeah. People are excited about this film. Yeah. And I honestly think this is one of the ones that you don't want to have spoiled. So you've yeah. got to watch it That's ASAP. True. Opening, yeah, opening yeah. weekend, first night. And the yeah. one, the theaters that have the most spaces? The 3D movies. Hector, get out. No, yeah. uh, don't, who's gonna who's gonna break the news to Hector? Someone's gonna that nobody likes I opt out. What is it? What do you say? What do Americans do when they want to get out of something? Oh, not not it. Not it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not oh, it. Yeah. Who's breaking the news to Hector that 3D sales are not doing? I think that Snicks in um, 3D would look cool. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Wasn't there one where like the cat was looking and it was out in 3D, the claws? And I was like, oh, oh maybe. Oh, I don't was know. Was that a 3D one. moment? Not sure. Well, but, whoever I mean, tells like, Hector that 3D is not doing well, find out if that was a moment. Yeah, and they're probably jumping in and out of portals, well, probably jumping through the really screen. Cool. I, I also feel like um, IMAX, obviously, still very popular. Mm -hmm. 4DX has its adherence, not me. I find that jarring and painful to my spine. Yeah, but I, um, it's like paying someone to sneeze on you, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't think I now, you. Deadpool and 4DX probably still wouldn't want to, but if there were some special, like, Deadpool exclusive, like, I don't know, fart gas or something like that. Mm -hmm. I could be tricked That's into it. That's how probably. you sell it. Um, but uh, if you've been watching, um, some of the tickets on sale trailers have come out. There's not a lot of new footage, some new jokes or yeah, whatever, yeah. kind of brief trailers. But, uh, so there was a, the trailer uploaded to the Marvel YouTube channel, and then Ryan Reynolds uploaded what seemed to be the exact same trailer to his YouTube channel. Thanks. But if you've been following New Rock Stars on social media platforms over the last couple hours, you've noticed uh, we found that there was a hidden QR code just in the Ryan Reynolds version. When you scan that QR code, it took you to an unlisted video of Ryan Reynolds uh, talking into his phone in like a VO booth, mm -hmm. making a lot of jokes about the Deadpool yeah. release, kind of at, at uh, Hugh Jackman's expense and kind of mocking kind of some of the meta Marvel ideas. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as we know, because there was like 100 views on that video when we posted those oh, clips, really? we were the first ones to find that and report yeah. it. It was really like a blink and you miss it kind of moment. You know, it was just like, if you if you go back, you'll see that it's just like in between his uh, like two legs. Oh, there we go, John. John yeah, right but, but then as soon as he walks past it, it disappears. It just wipes, like as soon as his leg clears it, it's like So zoop, what, you have to screenshot it? Yeah, yeah it's, pause. it's maybe on screen for a second, two yeah. seconds. Yeah, and it was clear enough to be able to scan it. Well mm -hmm. done. Yeah, yeah there was nothing gets by you sleuths. Yeah, so check it out. It was uh, really fun to find. I'm sure Eric's gonna have a, a fun time diving back through all the other Ryan Reynolds. I know he, he, he jokes like, "Great, I've just been assuming they're all the same uploads, yeah, but now I've yeah. got to find the other Easter eggs." Gosh, it's like face planting an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Uh, That's how that works. <laughs> Tip of the iceberg. Um, with the uh, in it. Yeah, so uh, we're excited about that. And like, obviously, both this movie in general and kind of everything Ryan Reynolds does mm -hmm. is like very smartly calculated marketing. That guy knows how to plant a little joke and a little reference and to keep people interested. Um, he's in the number one movie in the box office this weekend. Oh, yeah. If, if, yeah. And just to also like push push that notion with Ryan Reynolds, you know, like the reason why he's um, like a CEO of all these companies or like the creative lead is because they were like, hey, we want you to be the face of this campaign. And he's like, well, if you've got like $3 million to pay me to do this, why don't you just give me equity in your company? Mm -hmm. I'll become like, I'll come on board with my presence. The shares will go up. And instead of me making $3 million, I will make $300 million. And that's what he's done twice with mm. two different companies at least. So Ryan Reynolds... Yes. Yeah. Also, we'll take any aviation gin you want to send our way. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> what do you think's in this mug? <laughs> yeah. What was that face? Okay, I'm turning out a lot of faces today, guys. We'll are you see. Your some face of them are now? stream only. There's some stream only faces. There's some upload faces. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with a little news about The Boys. Season four comes out in a little less than a month, and we're starting to get some uh, little teases of the show, they're out there doing press. Uh, Jack Quaid uh, did an interview with Collider where he spoke on the upcoming uh, season and where the show goes down the line. He said, uh, they always find a way to somehow find new beats and they never repeat themselves. It's been really cool. This is my favorite season that we've ever done. Now, it's up in the ante. That's up He's never going to say, I thought last season was better. <laughs> he said, this is the third out of four uh, seasons as far uh, as is how I'm, I stand. But um, it also, you know, we're going to talk about this about another franchise or series possibly coming to a conclusion here. There hasn't been any talk about, this show's already been renewed for season five. Yeah. So that's, we're about to get season four, so there'll be one more. Obviously, there's already one pretty successful spinoff, Gen V. Yep. A The Boys Mexico mm -hmm. uh, spinoff has already been announced. Talk me through that one. I mean, there isn't too much uh, known about it. I think it, I bet you it's something that probably is, like, could never make it past the development phase. I, you know, it's it's very possible that it could just stay there. That they're like, hey, we're working on this thing. I mean, I think it just has I'll tell to do. You, I'll tell you why they won't, because Mexico's in the title. Like, sure. if it was, like, blaming it on a fictional character, sure. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they've labeled it, like, in a country and it doesn't work, that's mm -hmm. too well, much in, of a... In Amazon Prime, where all these series are located, right, is a global streaming service, mm -hmm. unlike some other ones, right? It, it is in all countries. So, you know, they committed to doing like five regional versions of that Citadel show that was not so a hit yeah. before they'd even yeah. had a single season out, right? They were already doing like an Indian version and, and different other ones. So they're like, this show they know is successful. Maybe they're already looking at the demographics. The show's already doing well in mm -hmm. Mexico and Latin America, possibly. So they That's do a spin-off. Yeah. I'm interested, like, is it going to be Spanish language? Well, Oh, interesting. Well, when you look at sort of who's tapped in, uh, I love the story of Diego Luna and Gael Garcia Bernal. They have been best friends mm -hmm. since they were e two mama tambien, which yeah. I've seen. Yeah. And lovers. Uh, in that one, well, 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 we can unpack that movie later. Um, they also have a production company together. So uh, I, okay. I wonder if it's like... They're yeah. producing it? They're almost going to be like this, the Seth of like the Mexican oh, side yeah, of things. Sure. But if they're going to be in it... That is such a win. Different. That would be really cool. Uh, also, yeah. two very good actors, of course, stars of uh, Marvel and Star Wars uh, properties, that, uh, respectively, but mm -hmm. um, not known for comedy. No. Yeah. Per se. This is a series that can often lean pretty comedic. Mm -hmm. Could but be maybe a very. That's why they're so excited to like just unleash and do yeah. their own thing with it. Maybe right. Yeah. yeah. And as of last November, um, they're going to be uh, EPing and considering taking on acting roles. So neither would be major roles. Got it. So that's really interesting that they. Yeah, maybe they like VOD really. executives or VOD Mexican or whatever sure. the Mexican yeah. equivalent of VOD is or well, whatever. Seth yeah. Rogen's not in Boys, but that's yeah. true. You know, yeah. He's yeah. Like, I think. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way, right before the boys came out, you would be like, "Oh, it's a Seth Rogen thing," but he's yeah, not, in yeah. It, right? Yeah. Um, and that, in that same interview, Jack Quaid went on to say that um, you know he hopes the series keeps going. Ideally, it lasts for as long as it possibly can. I definitely do think that I would like the show uh, to go out on its own terms when that happens, which. It's great. He, I like, it's a nice mix of Thirsty Thespian. He's like, I would like to continue to be employed by this show for quite a while, but also I wanted to tell a nice complete story and be able to end when it sees fit and not yeah. drag out too long, right? What do you think? Season five will be the end? 
feels Ooh. like it's going to be hard to keep telling Butcher and Homelander stories too yeah. much beyond that, right? I mean, that's the thing. Like, when he said that, um, you know, it, they're not going to repeat the same beats, like, that's really interesting because um, I feel like the last season was a little bit of that. Or, I don't know. I like the show, but I do feel like, you know, Brandon has said this on the show before, you can't, where does the show go? Because you can't kill Homelander. He's such an important part of the show. So if every season is just like, we're trying to kill Homelander, and then you you mm -hmm. can't kill Homelander again, it's like... Well, what's going to happen? You know? I wonder. So I always have a theory with most things where it's like if you have one pillar that holds mm -hmm. everything up and it collapses, you have nothing. So you want to build either a tent or like a temple. So you have like three or four pillars so that if one goes down, two or three can still hold it up. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that could be the detriment of this particular show because Homelander is such a pillar. Yeah. And what they're doing really well, though, is expanding the world. Mm -hmm. So they're showing the impact of having... Um, you know the substance V. They're showing what it's like to have uh, to have a divide between humans and those with uh, the soups. Um, so building out different properties within the franchise, mm -hmm. brilliant. Yeah, because it is. It does have a pillar. And, 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 and maybe we get a world where there's still lots of the boys content with no actual the boys. The actual the, the yeah, main series yeah. ends, but we still have other shows going on. You know, we get boys Ottawa, boys Manitoba. Boys Vancouver, I'm right here. boys Say it. Say it. Uh, Nova Scotia, boys, boys Halifax, boys Halifax, boys, boys Winnipeg, boys Toronto, mm -hmm. boys uh, Quebecois, boys, boys. Montreal. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, we'll see. Ironic because they shoot the show in Canada. Oh, so yeah, that's it'd be right. funny. Yeah. Hey, can I just a quick tangent mm -hmm. with boy stuff? Tony Starr, if you're watching, did you soft launch your girlfriend on social media? You cheeky. Whoa, thing. what does that mean? You cheeky. No, thing. Soft launch a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zach, you got to catch you, up with the you lingo. You guys forget I'm an entertainment reporter. I'm so invested. I think I we got to we got to stop down. Uh, uh, Evans hitting the brakes on the show to look at Tony Starr's. Uh, and how's Instagram. me calling him Tony as well? Tony, very yeah. familiar yeah. right here. <laughs> You're Tony. Is that okay. your girlfriend or what, buddy? Well done. She's a smoke Go, show. Was there a young lady showed up yeah, in his? Her. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he just held up a doggy. It's picture. a dog. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> While Evan does uh, this uh, valuable research, uh, we got a new acolyte teaser over the weekend. That's um, cool. It's, a, it's a, a short but juicy one. Let's yeah. take a look. This is a fight that you will not win. Okay. I've seen this. Yeah. She's killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. Whip. What? Oh! Ah! Light whip. Now she is a student of the dark side. An acolyte. I didn't do it. Oh, Believe me. Oh, Oh, okay. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Only on Disney Plus. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Believe, Believe me. me. Yeah. Whereas the earlier in the trailer, we see the same actress. Mm -hmm. She's definitely she, trying to commit some violence. Some daggers. So, yeah, yeah, the speculation is like, are those two people? Are these twins? Mm -hmm. Is it one person posing as another? Something, something, right? Like, yeah. uh... Or, or is she being insincere when she says I didn't do it, believe me? The thing is, it one, per, one person or two? So it's either, this is the thing, if she shows up with like the, robe of, the, and the, the, the dark yeah. side um, and then turns good, that doesn't really make sense, right? right? Usually you always start off good and then you get lured in by the dark side. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking twins, Basil. We're thinking that it could be <laughs> twins, that um, perhaps one of them was gifted with the midichlorians, the other one was lured into the dark side, maybe hated being in the shadow of the sister all that time, and mm -hmm. so chose yeah. power. Because what we're noticing, a big theme of this one, it's not good or bad, it's not even light and dark. Mm -hmm. It's power and more power. Until you get unlimited power, <laughs> which is the end goal, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the, what do you think, chat? Are we looking at twins? Or is this one person's journey? And it's almost like a look at sort of being swayed in one one mind. Yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, if you think you might have an evil twin out there, do your best not to have the exact same haircut as your evil twin, mm. is what I would say. <laughs> it's a very specific haircut. Yeah. It would be easy to avoid, one would think, uh, but somehow they did not. Um, also, I pose this question to you. Mm -hmm. Same person, two different jackets. Is Maud over there in a pink jacket and Blue Maud's right here? It's Schrodinger's jacket over here, okay? Are there two of me? Is one good and is one 
I'm freaking out. But but we were talking about, you know, the series maybe been slightly less hyped than some previous Star Wars live action shows because these are new characters and yada yada. Mm -hmm. A, that was a great little trailer. Light light whip. Light whip. Light whip whip. whip. and and Wookiee Jedi. Two (laughs) pretty badass things. We have seen a Wookiee Jedi. Before, if you look at some of the animated properties, yeah. you sure. see oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that there is, um, so, you know, a Kashyyyk, yes. from Kashyyyk, who built their own lightsaber um, and was in the Jedi training. But pretty cool to have that light whip, though. Mm-hmm. Whip it real good. Yeah, both right. live first, and live purple. action. purple. <laughs> That's true. Oh, yeah. And Apparently, purple. it was yeah. only going to be Mace Windu's lightsaber that had the purple because I think that was like Samuel Jackson's one request. <laughs> so, the fact that it's now like a purple light whip, I mean, it's a great time to be a Star Yo. Wars fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, th- that this is like a murder mystery in yeah. the Star Wars world. Maybe there's some weird uh, evil twin action taking place. Mm-hmm. Uh, good. Light side, dark side twins. I mean, that's yeah. fun stuff. Only thing I'll say about that is that they shouldn't have released that in the trailer if that's the case. Yeah. I actually think that that jumped the gun somewhat. Well, I, I, and it's one of those things where it's like you could look at this character and be like, oh yeah, she's in like a snowy environment, so she's got to like have wear a different jacket, or maybe she's on the run or something. Uh, but I think that in some versions of this trailer that was released, there was like a, a subtitle name maybe that was like different uh, than May. IMDb. What does it say on IMDb? Who does she Let's play? Say, One name or two? Um, well, um, and we're doing a little bit of Jedi right now, aren't we? We're doing a little. We're doing some uh, justice. Um, enforced. Enforced uh, detective detection detective. and investigation. That's mm-hmm. what Je- that's what Jedi stands for, right? That's what Jedi stands for. Yeah. We've decided uh, uh, from now. Justice, yeah. <laughs> enforced, Force. detection, and investigation. investigation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on on IMDb, it just says May right now. So we'll see. We'll see if that changes. Um, I like this question too from Short Sack in the chat. Is uh, do you think Acolyte is going to be standalone, or do we have to be deep in Star Wars lore to understand the show? It's interesting because this is taking place like a hundred years, or like two, one hundred to two hundred years before Episode One, Phantom Menace. So this is almost setting up more of the foundation for those. Um, the, you know, the, the yeah. Star Wars that everyone knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, like, if you do go into this pretty blind, I think it might actually be cool because you'll be like, okay, now I get to understand what the Jedi are in this part, in this time period, and uh, what that relationship looks like with, like, the Sith and how the Sith are, like, created. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's also, it's like, how blind? Do you know what a Jedi is? Sure. Right? Yeah. Like, if, if you've literally never uh, uh, consumed any Star Wars content, might be tough. But if you have even just a beginner's knowledge mm-hmm. of what lightsabers are and, and the Empire and whatever, right? I, I would assume this would be, let's hope this would be pretty enjoyable for you. Yeah. I think because it is more of like a prequel side of things, it's it's got origin sort of vibes to it. So mm-hmm. you learn about the Jedi Academy, uh, the training that takes place, and now the influence of the dark side. Yeah. I think that this is like really kind of trying to set up, like this is Jedi disorder going into the Jedi order and why order is so much more enforced with the councils mm-hmm. and yeah. why trade Fener- federation discussions were so boring in Phantom Menace <laughs> because they had to fleece out all the Sith. I was like pretty into it. I Stop when I watched it. it recently, I was like, oh, okay, we're getting some like real, <laughs> yeah. you know, gotta, I gotta know how the world works. Macroeconomics, here. yeah. yeah I'm, like, I'm here. Uh, yeah, but um, help me with the pronunciation, Kelnaka. Kel- is that how yeah. the, the Wookiee Jedi, mm-hmm. he's in there. We just get a brief glimpse of him. Big ass, tall, Wookiee dude. Um, and the, tall to some. Tall to some. Oh, okay. But pretty average for a... Uh, for a Wookiee. For a Wookiee. They're all tall. Kashyyyk, Kashyyyk, yeah, they live in trees. They're tall. One would think living in a tree uh, would benefit you to be small and lightweight. Yeah, like apes in Planet of the Apes. Yeah, gorillas. Gorillas live on the ground. That's why they're big and heavy. I forgot to pass it off. Would you like to do it now? While we were on the show. I did it during the Twitch section. I'm sorry. Yeah. okay. I didn't like the movie. I did not like that movie. movie. I did not like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. John's giving you a thumbs up from the back, which clearly a... means John enjoyed the movie. No, uh, he did not like it either. That was barely a five out of ten film. Oh, so it was like this face. No, and this one. That's a good face. Uh, that's a good face too. Yeah. Um, uh, and, okay. Yeah, oh. and Spidey Sensei in the chat last thing was saying, so they introduced uh, light whips a hundred years prior, and then they never used them again. I think that is the well, interesting we might thing, see, right? Well, we might see when somebody goes to rip it back and accidentally <laughs> tears, the, tears the head off their best friend or something like that. Or themselves, because like, you're back here. You don't know which way it's fling flying in. You better it's have yeah. excellent control of, of that light whip. Or the force. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You just have the force with But even you. just the training. 
Right. right? You you give that to a little Padawan, they doesn't know what they're doing. They're going to be It's the agree. first massacre of the younglings, and Yoda says, ban these we must. <laughs> yeah. you know? I would equate a, a lightsaber whip to the same as pole vaulting. How do you know you can pole vault? Like, you have to do a first attempt of that at that's one right. stage, and it's a long way down. Mm. And so I think that that's like training with the lightsaber whip. Today in my TED talk, I will spend the next 20 minutes discussing the parallels of the two. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe uh, that light whip wielder dies and the secret of the light whip, lip, light whip <laughs> dies we new, with them. We got a new tongue twister. Light, light whip, lip, blip. Crushed it. Kashyyyk. Okay. Um, <laughs> we also. Just born with it, maybe? <laughs> Kashyyyk. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe it's Maybelline. Uh, we want to thank one of the sponsors of today's show, Call Sheet. You hear, talk, we, you hear us talk about them on many Monday episodes. Uh, I am usually less mush-mouthed about it, but um, <laughs> they're the first legal financial exchange in the US where you can bet on any event, including Rotten Tomato scores. I was eyeballing it, uh, the Furiosa over under on a Rotten Tomato score is currently sitting at 85. So if you think mm -hmm. it's gonna be higher than 85 on Rotten Tomatoes, you can you can pick a yes. If you think it's gonna be under that, you can pick a no. And when it comes out, if you're on the right side, it pays out. We enjoyed the movie. And, and again, like Rotten Tomatoes are tough. And I, I don't know that I'm always aligned. Some things get yeah. very high Rotten Tomato scores that I don't enjoy and vice versa. Uh, that If movie, the one we previously talked about, yeah. I think it has like a 40 something on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, no, really I really love Rotten it Tomatoes. It was really good. It, well, it has a high cinema score. It has score. a high cinema so score, audiences, so audiences like, like it, but critics did not. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's yeah. always tough. Genres famously don't do like horror movies, action mm -hmm. movies often have low Rotten Tomato scores, but high audience scores. And this is the wow, critics. Wow, it's score. rotten. 46 to 87 percent. Which wow. a giant. I gap. don't. I don't even think if I, I was looking at the if scores prior to when it came out, and I was like, I. I would bet could 70 you, to 80. Could on you this. read one? I want to hear. What <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go for it. Um, and there's other things that like you can, you know, I uh, mentioned uh, is uh, Coleman Domingo going to get an Oscar nomination this year? I forget Ooh. what film he's oh, in. Oh, yeah, Sing getting, Sing. Sing Sing. Yeah, it's getting a lot of great. attention. Or Lady Gaga for uh, Joker 2, or other things like that. There's one right now Will Co Coyote vs. Acme get released? Really? Whoa. Yes. And, and a lot of other things like that. And of course they have things outside of pop culture as well, like political events and, and um, stock market things, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can sign up uh, and try it out for yourself by going to callshe.com slash break room. And the first 500 traders to make a deposit of $50 will get a free $20 credit. Uh, and we want to shout out um, our other sponsor today, Mando, I am literally. Don't you dare. I won't make anybody smell it, Thank but you. it smells good. I'm wearing Mando deodorant right now. The Mount I mean, Fuji I scent. I, there's nothing offensive happening. Uh -oh. oh. We got we got John Costa oh, walking on set. Here we go. That's pleasant. That See? Was quite close. And I I've been I've been you know moving and grooving all day. Okay. That's true. And I'm a I'm a musky man. Okay. I generate odor. Uh, there are elements in my diet that could be better, that might be affecting my scent, I don't know. Um, but uh, our friends at Mando, they make uh, a really great deodorant and their whole thing is they make kind of total body deodorant. Mm -hmm. I'm only using it currently on my armpits, but let's say you have smelly feet. Maybe you have other smelly parts of your body. You can use it on all of those parts of your body. I probably should be, yes, John? You said only only armpits? It's only on my pants, oh, John. <laughs> don't, don't you it get a little bit too Don't you get out ahead of your skis, John Costa. <laughs> You want to you wanna smell those other parts, you got to pay good money for it, okay? Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, and, and they have, uh, they have like different, they have like a more a liquid deodorant that might be better for certain body parts and, and like body wash, and all those kind of good things. They have little uh, wipes, which that's nice, you know, um, if you got a busy life and maybe you got to go right from work to something else, you're in between classes. You have classes, a car shower. It's a car shower. A little car shower. Like that's a nice way of putting it, it right? Where it's like, you, you got an event you need to go to or whatever, but you've been out and about, you're a little funky, yeah. you can do a little wipe down and be smelling better. Mm. So hold on, if someone wants to get involved, what are you gonna give them? Well, that's just the thing, Mond. As a special offer for our audience, uh, new customers get $5 off Amanda starter pack with code BREAKROOM at shopmando.com. Uh, that equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit shopmando.com and use code BREAKROOM. And again, buying deodorant at a grocery store or a drugstore is a miserable experience. You know what's not miserable? Going to shopmando.com. That's just my own personal experience. 
Uh, also, are... deodorant's not optional. Please get over the idea that deodorant is optional. I've been to some conventions, Maude, where <laughs> some people might uh, contest that belief. <laughs> mm, I'm here to I'm write that wrong and tell everyone. Uh -oh. uh, speaking of writing wrongs, it's time for the Monday Mod Minute. Let's go. She's going to write the wrong of not having read any headlines so far today. <laughs> That's not true, I actually wrote some of these. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but can you do it in 60 seconds? Can, you can I do thing? it in 60 seconds is the real key, because I wrote lots. Give me that clock. I think it'll be here. All right, let's go. A new trailer for, uh, has dropped for the Sandman season two, where Tom Ooh. Sturridge and co make a return for this Neil Gaiman comic book turned Netflix show. No actual date though, just a little coming soon. Huh. Also, can we see the return of Finn? When asked by The Hollywood Reporter if Daisy Ridley would want to work with John Boyega again and return in an upcoming Ray film of hers, she said, absolutely, of course, it feels like we should. So come on, Boyega, let's do it. Also, after the release of Fast and Furious X Part 2 happening in 2026, could the franchise move into television? Hmm. NBC Universal's Donna Langley said that there's still gas in the tank and are exploring directions that it could go, including the small screen, saying they might bring it back to the streets of LA and make it a more intimate story. Two Pirates of the Caribbean films are in the works, according to producer Jerry Bruckheimer. <coughs> Skip. <laughs> Damn. That is just a... <laughs> That's oversell. And in a weird turn of events, the fall guy, uh, for the fall guy, the Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt stunt actor flick that hit screens May 3rd is already coming to digital tomorrow, wow. May 21. That was only 19 days in cinemas. Wow. That is nuts, right? Like going to movie, going to digital tomorrow? I don't now, think they made close to they what did they not. And, and studios look at that, right? That the, the marketing money, and they spent a lot of money to market that movie, mm -hmm. but they spent on the theatrical, can still, if it's close enough, it basically still works as VOD on, on VOD, right? Like that movie's fresh enough in enough people's brain that now when they're clicking through Amazon or Apple It'll TV, they'll it. see it or whatever. Yeah. But that is still 19 days later. That's Happened like, very recently with Argyle. Argyle. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, Argyle had a bonkers oh. cast. Like they put every single person in that film. And like I got one of the, hey, please talk about our movie gift packs. And it was one of the best ones I've ever gotten. Oh, the Argyle, yeah, the Argyle thing looks oh sick. Oh my I've God, it was like Instagram. a full on <laughs> suitcase filled to the brim with wow. their great goodies. Well. Um, but Fall Guy, I thought would have done a lot better, especially off the back of Ryan Gosling's nomination and performance at the Oscars as well. And Emily Blunt seems to be so hot right now. So. Yeah. I People mean, talked about that that movie was strangely marketed in that it's kind of a rom-com, but it was also mm. like big action movie mm. and like, you know, like those are kind of different. Also very like movie about making movie centric. Like yes. it was very funny to like. Which famously <laughs> don't perform well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was funny just to tell like tell people like, oh, I'm seeing the fall guy like early today and then uh, other people were saying like, I, what movie is that? I'm like, mm, how yes. do you not know? Like, well, my also, whole feed is it's like, a pretty this. obscure television show, that's IP. True, yeah. It's based on IP, but like IP that nobody knows about. No. Anyways, we could, we could keep going and on that. And a little bit close to Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. Yes. That not so yeah, long yeah, ago yeah, as yeah. well. Uh, look, I'll go back to the Pirates of the Caribbean story. No, no it's okay. It we, we'll run that. I, I just think that, you know, it's Disney trying to go, well, we've still got Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland, so we mm -hmm. have to keep making that franchise to make the... the Theme park makes sense. But I will say that Margot Robbie's production company has one of the ventures for that. Yeah. I, I, oh, I, interesting. I feel good about that. But yeah. The other one, who knows? Yeah, because I think the other one they said would be like a reboot, which would be yeah. interesting. Well, that just sounds like Johnny Who? Yeah, true. Yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie Rep? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Rot <laughs> row. <laughs> yeah, it's Ronnie Rep. Old dog, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, oh man. sign me up. <laughs> Pirates. Pirate buddies. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're now in a post X Men 97 world. Morning, you two. We join you, Gambit. Uh, season one <laughs> having wrapped last week, uh, but there's a lot of speculation on season two already. Obviously, we got left with a big old teaser. Don't say it. We don't know. I'm 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 saving it. I oh, still, have I, you not watched the finale? Not the no that oh. one to go, and I just want to bathe in the fact that I've got one still to go. I actually might do a whole rewatch just to watch the last one. I, yeah. Oh, I that's a good it. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we won't. We don't have to uh, belabor the actual ending, but you know, I think anybody that watched a lot of that series was happy Pleasant with it, surprised. right? Like pretty universal fan mm -hmm. praise mm -hmm. for that show. Seems to have kind of like surprised a lot of people in a positive way, uh, earned a lot of goodwill yeah. for Marvel and specifically Marvel Animation. Mm -hmm. uh, in an interview with comicbook.com, head of Marvel Television, Brad Winterbaum, uh, said that season two is currently in the animatic phase. Maybe Maude can explain a little bit of what an animatic Storyboarding. is. Storyboarding. 
so ba- the episodes have been written and so now they're putting the script onto visually what it will look like and then that will go to the animation teams which is again split up in different factions someone's just going to do the background someone's going to do the main character and animations and then it's all going to go from there but yeah. this is what visually the episode is going to look like very different process than live action kind of production very yes different. uh bodemeo fired showrunner of season one, uh, also uh, wrote on X, I believe, that while he did write a lot of season two, he will not be heavily involved with production, makes sense, because he doesn't work there anymore, (laughs) or any production rewrites as it relates to the creative vision of the show. So he essentially set the foundation and it's up to them to tweak or to go with it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why did he get fired? It is wild that we don't know Do we have a scoop? Yeah, so it's very interesting. Um, And and so like that question of when are we gonna get a season two? Yeah. And in general, when are we getting any of these animated shows has been interesting. Uh, So in another interview or possibly in the same interview, Witterbaum, when asked, said that, uh, what if season three could be the next animation property that, Mm -hmm. that gets released? Interesting that the head of Marvel Television wasn't sure. Um, uh, and interesting because we know we have Eyes of Wakanda and uh, Spider-Man. Your friendly, your friendly neighborhood, neighborhood Spider-Man. Spider-Man are supposedly coming out this year. Yeah. And we have yet to see anything about a release date for What If Season 3. Reminder, the last one came out at the end of last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gap between Season 1 and Season 2 was about two years. Yeah. So we have assumed that that would be a 2025 yeah. release. But potentially that could come out sooner, or does that mean that Eyes of Wakanda and Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man might get delayed to next year? I don't know. It's interesting because, like, I think What If Season 2 was, like, received very interestingly. Obviously, it came out during the holidays, and I think people... Kind of quasi-binge dropped one episode one a day. One episode a day, yeah. yeah. But, and I think people generally liked it. I, I do think it was, like, kind of a weird, like, maybe didn't move the needle as much as, like, the first What If. Uh, so to me, it feels like maybe they would try to like, you know, save this for another binge drop time and then try to move one of these other mm-hmm. uh, like separate properties up. So like Eyes of Wakanda, right? It will be like canon to the MCU, but the Spider-Man that we were talking about earlier is just like, so it's going to be its own, own thing. thing, you know? Yeah. And I think that Marvel's going to be doing a lot more of that moving yeah. forward so that there is a lot more flexibility with moving things around mm-hmm. and not affecting story. Yes. And so that that's kind of like what we wanted to talk about, right? The future of kind of Marvel television and like technically separate divisions, Marvel television or a, a different division within Marvel television is Marvel animation, right? Mm-hmm. There's like Marvel TV, Marvel animation, Marvel spotlight. Right, Echo was Marvel Spotlight. Well, well, Marvel Studios, right? But Marvel Spot, Marvel Spotlight. I think we, until we see more projects, we're not quite sure how it's going to be like played out, right? Like, is it going to be like a studio, or is it just like they say this is a spotlight project now? Yeah, we don't know because because it was also pitched to us at one point that these are street level stories. Yeah. So is Daredevil Born Again going to be Marvel Spotlight? Right. Or is it going to be Marvel Television? Gosh, I feel like we're Jediing this up. (laughs) Do we have enough investigation? Uh, Justice. Detection. (laughs) Investigation. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think a big part of the response to X-Men 97 is that it is not connected to any live action, mm-hmm. right? Technically, it's connected to a, a TV show from the 90s, but you did not need to have watched that TV show, certainly don't need to have watched it recently to have enjoyed yeah. this TV show. But if you didn't watch it in the 90s, you missed out. That was <laughs> one of the out. best parts of my childhood. That's well. all. Yeah. Uh, was that pre-emo phase or was that a Very with... pre, very okay. pre-emo phase. Yeah. How old do you think? It... Don't answer that. Uh, well, it's pre-emo as a concept almost. Oh, yeah. No. I no? mean, emo was like that goth. Was, that was a reasonable backpedal. I'll but but then like, you know, uh, Dashboard <laughs> Confessional and that kind of How did you know that was my number Dude, one? Come on. I, love I was in college. <laughs> I was in an algebra class. Were <laughs> you bored? Yeah, I was born. Okay, How young so do you think I am? Uh, you're you're uh, wearing but, a flat cap. Um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting, and, and you know, pivoting off of what uh, Maud was saying a moment ago, right? Like them being able to tell disparate stories that don't need to connect. Mm-hmm. Some people have even pointed out, well, like Captain America, Iron Man, Black Panther all show up in X Men '97, right? Yeah. Does that mean they're going to get spinoff series of their own where it's like a Captain America '97? I don't think so. And like the Captain America that showed up in X Men '97 is certainly different from the one in What If. Yeah. Or one that might show up in Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, mm-hmm. right?
right? Like they can have different versions of all these characters in these animated series. And because it's not even like a physical actor and the styles of the animation could be so different, mm -hmm. you're allowed to tell completely unrelated stories, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I think that like even just moving into more of the like multiverse and um, just like having the ability to be like, okay, we don't, now, you know, for 10, 15 years, right? We've been like, oh, how are these things gonna connect? And it was such a like, uh, Marvel, no pun intended, but like a Marvel yes, that it was, was. Pulled, no. <laughs> yes, it no, was. No. You looked at me as you said it, like, watch this. I'm about to pun so ah. hard. And then you said not intended. What a lie. Intend that pun. That's right. Own I'm, it. I'm coming undone. Um, <laughs> all right. So, but it was it was incredible that they were able to pull off that level of interconnectivity, right? And streamers hadn't really been invented yet, right? Netflix was kind of there, and the only TV show they were really doing was like Agents of Shield until Daredevil came out. Now that there's so many more outlets and things like that, it seems like the more that you try to make this all connected, it's just harder for yes. the general audience to to take in. I think it's also harder for the storytellers creating these yeah. works you to have, work, right? Exactly, yeah, and so even though like I personally love it, right? I love when these things connect and obviously we love discussing and talking about it. It'll be interesting to see, and I think I would like them to start doing more of these separate things and to enjoy just the show as a show or whatever. Right? I actually think that they're starting to explore different ways to connect the properties. That I too. think yeah, yeah, that yeah. X-Men 97, that reference of like the, the outfits and the costumes, mm -hmm. like what are we gonna wear, black? You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's referencing a movie that already existed. I think that sort of fourth wall breaking connection mm -hmm. works just as well. I do think the first 15 years was incredible because yeah. it was a domino effect. That one came out, when it came out, it hit the next one, which mm -hmm. then led into the next one. That was not sustainable. So yeah. I do yes. think it's like um, they're, they're using unique ways to connect them, mm -hmm. yeah. just not canonically yeah. and, and linear. And, and exactly. especially the volume they're doing now, right? There's so many more hours of, of Marvel content than there were when it was like three movies a year, right? Like just because of, and so it's like, it's, it's, it's a burden to have them be connected. Yes. So like, I'm excited. I'm excited for animation going forward. You know, we haven't seen the other series, uh, but it, it will be interesting. We were even talking about, there are some Marvel stories they just work better in animation. I was saying yeah. like some of the galactic stuff, some of the like magic stuff, you can do differently and maybe like kind of more authentically more fun mm -hmm. in animation than mm -hmm. you could be able to pull off in uh, live action where it's gonna be a lot of blue screen. It's gonna be a lot of yeah. the CGI volume, heavy. CGI. Because like with animation, you gotta know that it's gonna look the way you want it to look throughout the process, right? Whereas like in live action, you can just set the screens up and be like, well, we'll figure it out later. Yes. You know, we can rebuild well, it as much as even, we want. Even Winterbaum talking about Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, he says it's a very Steve Ditko version of the mm -hmm. show. So like, it's gonna look like the 1960s comic book, which again, is something you can't recreate in 2024 on the screen. Mm -hmm. Also, does anybody out there know how the hell were they able to make a Spider-Man TV show that doesn't have Sony involved? Oh yeah. How are they we doing We were talking this? about that earlier. John knows? Like, uh, yeah, I think that the situation is that Marvel Studios has the rights to animated Spider-Man television, which is why like that Silk show is going to be live action and the upcoming Spider-Man Noir show is also going to be live action. That's my understanding. Interesting. Oh, also, 15 years ago, Nickelodeon had the rights to the Incredible Spider-Man or the Amazing Spectacular Spider-Man, one of them. Mm. And, but, like, and there's been that Spidey and Friends little kids show. Yeah. I mean, there have yeah. been some Yeah, some yeah. Spider -Man. A lot of people in the chat agreeing with John Marvel has the rights to animated Marvel. Yeah. Right. yeah. Great. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be really... But now, can Marvel put out a Spider-Man animated movie or Sony gets that? Because, oh. I mean, obviously they have the Spider-Verse movies. That's Sony. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe, yeah, or maybe is it just, just Miles yeah. Morales? Oh. Oh, yeah. Compete. Well, I mean, but they have a Peter Parker in that world, yeah. right? They've got a couple of them. Interesting. Uh, let's get an entertainment lawyer. Come on the show, you cowards. Uh, oh, yeah. Explain yeah. all these contracts that are sealed and not available to the public. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess to kind of, like, you know, broaden out the conversation, like, do we think that like the future of Marvel like is in TV and is in these kind of like telling these stories in like a longer way, but not necessarily like directly connected, right? I think no, yeah. because okay. they still like you, if you quit making Marvel movies, mm -hmm. I think over time then the importance of the streaming product degrades. Yeah. One reason yeah, yeah, yeah. we are so invested in the streaming product is because 
they occasionally put out billion or two billion dollar movies mm -hmm. that take over the world yeah. mm -hmm. for a period of time, right? And they're kind of the last of the monoculture in mm -hmm. some ways. So they still need that. They still need the potential for another end game or No Way Home or whatever. Yeah. Um, and and like financially, Disney needs that as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like we haven't seen, I mean, this has been documented by smarter people than me, but like streaming has yet to launch other than Stranger Things like a successful franchise that you can build like theme parks around. Mm. Across yeah. any streaming service, can you name a property, you That's know, arguably, so arguably like The Boys is close-ish. But they just keep doing more television spin-offs. Yeah. And they're not on the big screen. It doesn't even look like they're eyeing the big screen for it. Right, and mm. like, you know, I don't know how many t-shirts or lunch boxes The Boys is selling, mm -hmm. it's certainly, a small right. percentage. And of, also like so much of the identity of that product, of that franchise is like making fun of. Yes, it's in contrast everything else, right? to yeah. the so, monoculture of Marvel, yeah. It's for adults. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a lot of Marvel's big money for merchandise is for kids. Yeah. Kids are the ones that are spending all yeah. that money to have you, to you need nine year olds toys. bugging their parents to take them to Disney, to go to the uh, Avengers campus, to buy the mm. t-shirt, to buy the video games, all this kind of stuff. And, and so it's like, you need the tentpole film franchise. I think kind of like off of that though, like the future of like certain types of storytelling is certainly TV. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we probably would, in this world, we probably never get a Miss Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. We did choose in the Marvels, obviously, but like yeah. what they were able to do over the course of a series, they probably would never get to do in a movie. True, and maybe like true. things like X-Men 97, weirder, niche, yeah. things like that, right? They get to explore in ways that don't have to make a billion dollars and serve such a big global yeah. audience, right? I think the success of X-Men 97, they are going to invest more in animated, but it's going to fill out the Disney Plus staple the what is it bundle i don't know threshold the slate, slate. yeah the same time <laughs> jinx haha -ha. i made you redundant face. in the show <laughs> that's a good face uh, yeah that's probably the best one so that's far good face. Yeah, just to the wrong camera, but that's fine. <laughs> Whoa! You can't see that on television. You don't get that joke. You're too young. I'm too young. You get it? Yeah. Yeah. Early Nickelodeon. That's it. You can see everything on the internet. Yeah, true. Good point. But that's yeah, my thoughts on it. They'll do more animated. I, I just wish the episodes were a little bit longer. I mean, we yeah. used to get to, we used gone are the days of 22 episodes a season for yeah. anything. Right. Right. But like, you get you get a little bit more. But at least these are like full 30 minute, 30 to I think 40. That finale was, was like 42. So you're yeah. in for a treat, you know? But they're full like, 30 minutes, right? Because like back in the day with commercials, we were getting 22, you know, 22 episodes, 22 minute episodes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a great credit to the series who were watching it. I've said it so often, but you pause it, you're like, wait, I'm only on minute 10? Like yeah. I thought the episode was about to end soon. Like it is wild how good these uh, episodes were. And yeah, I, I do agree. I think that. You know, like we, we were talking off air and you briefly mentioned it, but like it is, sometimes it's hard to just do stuff live action, right? Like a lot of these X-Men stuff, like some of this stuff will look better animated mm -hmm. and powers and certain characters. And so I think like recognizing the opportunity that presents itself there, it will be interesting to see which characters and, and storylines they deem is important enough to do in animation or, or rather would be better served that way. Yeah, and I think that's the hope that Marvel gets good at all these things, live action series, animation series, live action film, so that they can then just look at a character or a storyline and be like, where can we serve that best? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it through that medium. In fact, know? I wanna ask that question and pose it to chat and commenters. What three characters or storylines do you think would best suit Animation. Oh, great one. Oh, what, yeah, three, yeah. Char well, three characters. I'll, I'll start you off with one. I think Beast from X-Men, better animated. Hard yeah. to do that guy live action, mm -hmm. agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, I threw out a couple with Evan earlier when we were chatting, like um, Novacore kind of stuff, yeah. space, yeah. you know? Um, well, I they're think that all green faced and you know, like they're all sort of like oh. alien-esque. We're we talking about the same ones. No, you, I think you're thinking of the scrolls, right? Secret invasion. Mm, yeah, scrolls versus the Kree. Kree. Yeah, Kree, yeah, yeah, Kree yeah, and scroll. Yeah, but like Xandar, all that kind of stuff. I think like Hulk, like a planet Hulk, kind of a oh, thing. Yeah, sure. Like a Sakar. I mean, Sakar was done really well in Thor Ragnarok, but I bet like that could be funky and cool mm. as more of that. You know, like anytime like 
people are not humanoid and would have to be yeah. CGI anyways. Why not then just go full animation? Plus, yeah. like, I mean, like Hulk animation action, you could really do right. the smash and the, you know, the, the action sequences could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Like we were saying, I don't think, maybe there's a visionary filmmaker who could make this work, but like, I think it'd be very hard to do Cyclops falling from the jet and blasting <laughs> into the ground to slow his descent. I don't know how you pull that off in live action. Is that from badass. the finale? No, that no, was no, from like episode, episode yeah, one, yeah, one or two. Yeah. When they're fighting the Sentinels for the first time, they, they, they blow up the shit, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you kind of—that's that, how he made his entrance. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. what about us? You do see that though in um, X Men First Class, but it's Havoc screaming at the ground to oh, stay yeah, afloat, yeah. right? And right. or Siren <laughs> or, or Banshee. It Banshee. was Banshee. Yeah, Banshee. Yeah, yeah he's like, yeah. Ah. honestly. Yeah. Anything, Black Canary, was it Canary from um, Arrow? But, anything that's got a, a vocal sound wave, oh, yeah, animate yeah, yeah. it. Animate it. Yeah. Don't make you need these the wavy actors lines. go, yeah. ah, You need the wavy so lines. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we, the inverse of, of everything you guys were saying, like, I think uh, a She-Hulk that's like a real like legal procedural that was like able to get any, any cameo they wanted, right? Any random lawsuit just like fully animated and just like having any character appear. Because that's also the thing too with animation, it's like you don't have to have like the actor that did this role to come in to be yes. that person, right? You can have anyone voice this animated version of the character because it's more about the character than about the Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great point. You can have every Marvel character show up mm -hmm. to be a defendant that's or a, or a yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. But have, I want it to be done in the style of, and I'm blanking on the name, but it was that long-winded adult animated cartoon of like a James Bond parody. What was Venture that? Venture Brothers? Archer? No. No. Archer. 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 Yeah, oh. I want that animated Ooh, in Archer style. Shield oh, yeah. Archer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like litigating who gets the most credit in the battle for Earth in Endgame. Oh, <laughs> like yeah, on yeah, the yeah. plaque or whatever. Like, yes. yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, plus then you could also maybe have more sex. Are, are we projecting? Which is this what is you that? need? Is this, this what is you the, want? Can you have more sex? Mm. I mean, we got a little sex in She-Hulk. Her and, her and Daredevil knocked boots. Is that gonna get mentioned in Daredevil uh, Born Again that he had sex with? I think so. I don't think he's the kind of guy who would brag about it, actually. Yeah, but maybe somebody else mentions it to him. Well, he'll be like, oh, I, I, I can't pick, like, I can't talk right now. I'm, I'm fighting Fisk or whatever. Oh, and then he, like, <laughs> fights 12 guys yeah. down a hallway while uh, uh, ignoring Jennifer Walters is called. And then they, they meet up for dinner at the end. Oh, oh, and he's sorry. like, it's a tough city. He can't ghost her, but yeah, obviously he, he's not a kiss and tell kind of guy. No. Let's yeah. just make that abundantly clear. Uh, well, that's a good point to wrap it yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching another Monday Headlines episode of The Break Room. Uh, you should follow Maud Garrett on all social platforms to keep up with all the fun things she's doing. There right it is. Right there, and I have a book club, Sci-Fi Fantasy, if you want to get involved. Boop, 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 boop. We have a Discord. Doo -doo -boop -boop -boop, which is like a secret headquarters. Pop it up <laughs> again because I'm still going. A -boop 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 -boop. Thank you. There it is. Uh, follow, uh, like, subscribe, all that jazz on the break room. You know what? If you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't left a comment in a little while, leave a comment. Just write pen. No, that's bias. Don't, ju no, yeah. not team pen. Um, write, oh, what's my thing? Jacket? Reversible jacket? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, N A U R. Okay. Uh, Choose one of those and just leave a comment. Why right now? For no. the engagement. Or or, spl or splinter sell off and, and write um, uh, Evan's hat. Evan's oh, we hat. can do better than that. Or splinter sell off and write Splinter Cell. Tiny mug. <laughs> tiny mug chat? How about Is it or do you just have big pen? How about big pen? Big pen in the chat? That is a big pen! <laughs> Or do you just have small hands? For chat to decide. It's for the comments. Uh, vote. One, write in tiny, tiny hands and big pen. Which side are you on the debate? Is it a blue dress? Or, or was she saying uh, the other phrase? OK. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, tune into all the fun content on The Break Room this week. On Friday, we'll be talking Furiosa. And yeah. Nope. No, nope. no, we're not. We're not. My bad. No, Friday we're talking Fury. Furi Furiosa only. <laughs> only. Exclusively. Yes. Who invited me? <laughs> we did. Um, thank you so much for watching, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. See ya. Twinkle, bye bye.